ora and welcome to another episode of Playmakers. Now, my guest today is a very special one. She is a former World Muay Thai kickboxing champion and she is set to reappear in the PFL in Atlantic City in May this year. Joining me today is professional fighter Jenna Fabian. Kia ora, Jenna. Kia ora. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> now, I'm super excited to get into um, your second appearance in the PFL, yeah. um, Professional Fighters League, um, in a couple months time. But first, I'm really intrigued about your journey, your athletic journey in particular, to get to where you are now. Um, I have spoken to you, you know, a couple times in the past, and you did mention that there was, you know, you were a track champion and you've done triple jump and rowing as well mm. in a former life. Mm. So talk to us about your journey and how it ended up at kickboxing. Yeah. Um, so from the age of six, um, my mum got me into track and field. Um, and back then it was Waitakere City. So that's who I started with and then eventually moved on to um, North Harbour and, and represented them. And yeah, till about the age of 19. Um, and that was, yeah, that was my life. Uh, early childhood school and and track and traveling all over the country and then internationally in the later years. So yeah, it exposed me to so much and kept me kept me really disciplined as a kid, um, looking back in, in hindsight. <laughs> yeah. um, so um, my, my naughty years came later, no, <laughs> but yeah. And um, so yeah, that was my base and um, what kind of set me up um, to follow other sports and fall into other sports. Um, I then moved to Australia, into, uh, Sydney, Australia, where I got into uh, still water rowing and as well as surf boat rowing, which is quite a big um, part of their culture um, on that side. So that was really cool um, and got to travel all over Australia with that. Um, totally something I've never been exposed to um, growing up. Uh, I was quite strict into track, like I said, and um, and and yeah, different culture, different world. Um, and then uh, went on a holiday to Thailand and <laughs> found Muay Thai. <laughs> yeah, like literally um, my first martial art or first combat kind of training of any sort. Um, I never did any any kind of martial art growing mm. up. Um, so, yeah, that was my first exposure to it very late in comparison to, I guess, when people tend to start training or getting into combat mm. or fighting. Um, so, yeah, that was that. Was that. And it, it started with um, training, uh, fitness and for a bit of fun and learning a new skill and then progressed into... Hang on, I'm actually pretty good at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I thought at the time, but I really wasn't. <laughs> I, I thought I was, no, but um, uh, yeah, just just found this passion and love for um, the, the, the training and the art itself mm. and um, later on the lifestyle and I changed my entire life to commit myself to becoming a professional fighter. Wow. Yeah. It's not unusual for um, like a lot of the fighters that I speak to anyway talk about how you know they played another sport first and mm. then you were able to transfer these skills here into you know into MMA or whichever art you take up so how were you able to do that considering there was no you know it was non-contact what you were doing before kickboxing? Yeah I think um, what I took from track was um, just, just the disciplines that we had uh, that were ingrained in me um, through the sport, mm. um, and in terms of uh, knowing my body and be, having that awareness, um, that physical awareness, and also you know uh, the mental uh, side of it that transferred, even though they were two totally different sports and skill sets. Um, a lot of the mentality and the disciplines that you, that are required in you know in, in competing in any sport really did uh, play a huge hand in me uh, developing as a fighter and, and and throughout those beginning years more so and even yeah. to, to now of course um, so I think that was that was um, that set me up mm. to be able to to be able to take on all these new challenges and new skill sets and, and to, yeah, that, that world. Yeah. So, yeah. When you talk about when you were, you know, in your track days and, and then rowing as a child, I'm guessing mum and dad or one of them were probably 
helping you and supporting you or chasing you around you yes. know, competition to competition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a full-time job and not realising you just think that's just what mums yeah. do, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, you know, cater to you <laughs> your whole life. And so, yeah, no, bless my, my, my mother and my grandmother yeah. Um, were, yeah, my my staples growing up and so um yeah mum every every week like every weekend and and not including the trainings um you know throughout the week um yeah just uh, financed and hosted <laughs> that whole you know of all those years growing up and then grandma and nana um yeah definitely played her hand in making sure that um everything at home was taken care of mm. so i was very very fortunate that um, yeah, I, I had that support mm. growing up, yeah. So what did they think when you wanted to take on kickboxing, which was probably a bit left field to what they thought your path would be? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, initially, like, they didn't understand it, and, uh, yeah, they... And, and, and again, like, in hindsight, I, I get it now, um, but we actually, I had to kind of just, um, I don't know a nice way to say this, but almost leave them behind because, um, yeah, they, they didn't understand it. It was such a left field turn, like you said, um, and, and it's not something I ever grew up doing, mm. like, um, you know, combat or fighting and or, or combat training. And so um, they they thought I was, <laughs> initially my mum thought I was getting involved in some like underworld thing <laughs> in Thailand, yeah. like, cause I went on this trip and then I was like, and then after a few months and organizing and prepping and whatnot, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I've got an opportunity to move mm. over there, mum. And just so she thought I was getting involved with something. Yeah, she just <laughs> didn't believe like yeah. I was gonna um, take on this whole new challenge and yeah. like, become a fighter mm. and um and also my dad yeah was the same like I like you know <laughs> he, yeah so um it took a little bit for them to understand it and so what I had to do um was just prove to them mm. and um show results with what I was doing and how serious and committed I really was mm. um to it um and as a parent yeah like the the unknown and uncertain can be scary and so that it was more them um, looking out and being concerned for me, um, if anything. Yeah. But now, um, and you know, throughout the years, as I did develop and come through, um, yeah, they're extremely proud. And it's not like they never supported me, yeah. it was just more I had to prove and show yeah. them, you know, um, that I was that I was serious about this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's their job though, right? Yeah, so, I have kids too, I'd be exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. So at the time we we had a few conversations over the phone and a few words here and there. Um, but now yeah, no, nah, and then um, they soon understood and soon got it and with communication because I was away for some years mm. um, abroad and pursuing this. Um, so yeah, they, 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 they understood pretty quickly. Mm. Like my, my, my true like passion for it and, and how far I was wanting to take this and yeah. how serious I was about it. So, you know, as good parents do, they're just like, okay, well, we'll support you. <laughs> we'll 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 just check in. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Are you all right? <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. You were a bit of a nomad. Like when I think about, you know, your career, because now you're based at City Kickboxing yeah. in Auckland. But you, like you say, you were based in Thailand. You've yeah. spent time in America. So you've, you've, you know, gotten all these experiences and mm. opportunities in these different places. What did you get out of, you know, traveling halfway around the world to then come back around to Auckland? Yeah, um, man, I think I just, uh, life experience, man, and it, and it grew me, um, uh, you know, of course, as a fighter, but more so as a person. Um, I think when I first initially left home to Australia, that's a hop, skip, and a jump, and it's and I was always um, back and forth to to New Zealand, um, like you know, five, six times a year. It's easy yeah. for us. Um, well, it was then. Yeah, <laughs> not these days. It's a bit different now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so and so that was that. Yeah, that was another. You know, my first kind of growing experience as as a person, um, but. Uh, going over to Asia and being amongst a totally different culture, um, different speaking, you know, different language, um, and yeah, um, you know, uh, that forced me to um, step out on my own mm. and um, 
really figure some things out for myself. Uh, so those were the biggest lessons that I that I took from it. And then um, from just staying true that whole time um, and having that passion and love for what I did, it, it, it brought other opportunities. I never planned to. Um, I never thought that um, it could take me all around the world. This this the sport and this mm. lifestyle. And um, man, the, the opportunities came and um, I was in the right place at the right time to commit and, and explore that. And uh, it was, yeah, like I said, it was never ever planned, but man, it, it just, it showed me so much and, and um, brought into my perspectives on the world and where I'm from too. Mm. And it made me have that deeper appreciation for home, for mm. where I'm from, that I never realized that I needed or didn't realize I, um, didn't appreciate as much in the later years. So mm. it's brought me full circle now to here. So uh, I just think, um, yeah, much, much more, you know, it comes with age and experience, you know, much more better equipped mentally and mm. emotionally and, and got a little bit of uh, years behind me now, like eight years that I've been doing this. And um, yeah, you, you, you learn things along the way and, Smart, become smarter you yeah. know yeah so uh yeah it's crazy I've been to so many random little pockets of the world man <laughs> and, and then like not just like yeah visited a lot of places but spent time in these places that yeah. I just I, I didn't even know at school like with really, like yeah. some of these places yeah. so it was cool it's been cool yeah and really really fortunate that I've mm. been able to experience all that and along yeah. the way I'll bring it up yeah you get a title yeah, yeah. So talk about that, because that's amazing. That's, yeah. an, that's probably, you know, a big thing on, you know, on your CV now. Yes, yeah. So talk about that. Experience. Yeah, a really nice ribbon on the CV. Um, and um, my, my first martial art, like, like you said, was Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I started that in Thailand, in the Mecca of the sport. And that was, um, once, I, once I started to become serious about the sport and, 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 and fighting, um, that was a goal to be a world champion, and I had um, my, my very first trainer was a Lumpini um, and Raja champion, which in Thailand is prestigious, like it's the top of the top um, in the sport of Muay Thai, and um, and so I that was that was a goal. I did, and I I remember I remember like as this like young naive like, like do you think I could be a world champion do you think I can do you think I can and you know and, and he's like yeah yeah and I'm sure he said that to like whoever asked but and so that was always that was a goal I loved that sport so much I was so enamored with it back then and everyone that I was surrounded with and kind of looking up to at that point mm -hmm. um and then uh later on throughout the years and as I traveled around um you know got into MMA and started uh, focusing and and, and uh, training more toward that um, and so Muay Thai became kind of on the back burner and my future and horizon started to open up mm. in MMA or that's where I was looking to and then it wasn't till I uh, moved to California and the States um, where I got this opportunity to uh, fight for a WMC world title so that's one of the that is the the major one in Muay Thai um, and so I had to, yeah, so the focus came full full circle and it came back around and, um, yeah, it was against a, a good opponent and a very, like, experienced um, uh, lady in the, in the fighting world. And, uh, yeah, so that, that all happened over in California and that was a really proud moment for me. Um, and, and, yeah, it was my first fight um, over there in the States. Mm. Um, so yeah, it was like, oh, whoa, okay, <laughs> all right, all right, we'll do it. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so when I think of America, and it's probably you know, I got my my glasses on in terms of like social media, TV, pay per views, la la la. Yeah. America seems to be the mecca of you know, of concentrated MMA. Yes. You know, that's where all the the doors kind of open type thing. Yeah. So you were there, yeah. fighting for titles, um, training in gyms there with other prestigious fighters. Yeah. What drew you back to Auckland to continue pursuing your career mm. and coming away from that environment? Um, well, I, I had been back home prior to um, making that move to California. And 
this was before, I think only Dan at that time had a contract mm. in the UFC, so this was prior to all the boys' success, um, soon to come. Um, but uh, I loved it, and it was like, it was, um, it was my first level up in terms of skill set and um, actually being back home and spending time at home and uh, knowing our system um, and um, being amongst our um, pool of coaches here. And um, and I, I just, yeah, something about it was like, oh, okay, I can be at home. Something kind of at that point sparked in me and then I got this opportunity and to go over to the States. And I wasn't going to take it um, because I just was like, well, how am I going to even be there? Like, yeah. this other side of the world. I don't know anyone. Yeah. I don't have money. I don't have all these things. I don't have, like, a... a, a, a you can a fight, base. but yeah. the yeah. living part... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. I was like, oh, I just live in the gym or what? <laughs> and um, anyway, all those logistics kind of got, got handled and sorted. Um, and it was Eugene that actually pushed me to go. Um, and because uh, prior to that, I was going to be at home. I was going to make the move back home mm. and be based full time with my family at C City Kickboxing. And um, that was what I was going to do. Then this opportunity literally got presented to me. And was this the first PFL thing or was it before that? It was before that. It was before that. Yeah, PFL happened while I was in the States a couple of years into that. But um, yeah, it was huge that um, pushed me to go. And I, oh, and I, so this was before you went at all? Like the, the, yeah, the, the yeah. ideal to come back here, not yeah. to go? Oh, yes, okay. yeah, right. yeah. And then, um, like I said, literally this, this opportunity to be based in California mm. um, got presented to me. And at that point, and this is not that long ago, like four and a bit years ago now, um, uh, MMA in New Zealand wasn't nowhere near to what it is today um, with the boys mm. um, specifically. And so for myself as a female, mm. um, the opportunities were definitely not here, mm. um, uh, not at that point yeah. in the foreseeable uh, mm. future. And there was also, there was more opportunity um, um, for myself um, being based over there and to, to explore that yeah. and that's what huge um, which I was really surprised at the time said look you've got to figure, find it for yourself he goes I said but what if what if and he goes then you come home and yeah. then you be with us yeah that's okay we're always yeah, here. yeah we're always here <laughs> yeah. um, and I, I was in shock at the time I was like really really you think I should go so you should be on the if, if this is an offer that's been presented to you. You should be there on that mm. plane as soon as possible. And he gave me his blessing and just reaffirmed to me that um, no matter what happens, we're always here and you, you just come back. Mm. That's the worst that can happen, right? Yeah. And so that gave me the courage to, to step out there um, and, and make, that, make that move at the time. And then, uh, so yeah, three and a half years later, um, you know, had, again, gained some more experience, had some good fights, got a world title under my belt, and then um, uh, a year before I came home, I uh, got presented with um, the offer to to join the PFL. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a cool story. It's a nutshell, yeah, yeah. but yeah, yeah. So much. I make it sound good, but it, yeah, it's <laughs> it's like no, it's it's been a journey for sure. But yeah, it's yeah. been it's all mounted to mm. this point. So. Yeah. Um, well, all of it I'm grateful mm. for, have to be. You mentioned Eugene saying, you know, well, and even you recognising that the opportunities for women just weren't here at the time. Yeah, they're and that's not even limited. that long yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're yeah. still quite limited, I think, yes. when it comes to these opportunities. So, yeah. you know, when you were starting out and you were looking, you know, towards this goal of, you know, one day becoming a world champion and, and all these things, was that something that you had that you even thought about? Was that the you know the fact of being a woman in a male-dominated sport makes it a bit harder? And did that adjust your mindset at all? No, I was I was quite um, you know ignorance is bliss like mm. when and it really was like I didn't even think um, sex was a factor or um, even really uh, understand the um, discrepancies. Mm. At the time, it was just um, something I truly, truly um, fell in love with. Um, 
yeah, just the, the, for, at first the skill set, the training, the feeling and the endorphins and um, the people I was meeting and um, the lifestyle that it exposed me to, um, something like I'd never experienced, you know, just a lot of all of that. Um, and uh, so the, the, the intent was genuine and pure at the yeah. time and, and, I, and, I, and I loved what it was doing for me as a person. And, and being very competitive and being um, athletic and uh, loving to learn new things, it all just coincided. And so it all um, had my name all over it at mm. the time. And then it wasn't until later that, you know, as, as you get in deeper to the sport and the world, and as you, as you go up the levels, you know, uh, that you realize all these other things mm. that, um, you know, uh, haven't always been nice lessons or easy things to navigate um, uh, as a as a female fighter, mm. and then yeah, you see that you see uh, how where we stand currently in the sport, mm. um, and it it's it's tested me at times, um, but now it's only made me. Uh, stand stronger in yeah. where I am and, and my stance um, and and what I'm going to do going forward. Mm. You know, it's it's now it's confirmed to me, like, like to put it in, I'm going to be an all black of this thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, so it, it had, and it's taken a minute and a lot of hard realisations and experiences to, to truly feel that, but mm. um, I must... I must. Yeah. 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 A lot of the times in the early days, like you were saying, when the boys started to, you know, be getting all these opportunities on the UFC cards quite early, when we'd come to the gym, you were the only female there, you know, training and sparring. I can see that there is growth now at CKB. Uh, There's growth across the board. Yeah. But there was a time there where it felt like you were the one flying the flag there for a little while. Was it at all like that? Um, Yeah. I like... um, because I, I guess uh, I wasn't used to having other females um, of that, uh, yeah, of that um, where I was at and, and where what I was pursuing at, at the level that I was trying to reach um, around me um, so much. Um, so it was just us yeah. and that's just how it was. And I was just the girl that... Um, like would all banter with and pick on and like you know we'd go back and forth but it was you know so that was uh, that was how it was and like um it was all of us and then I I go away and of course I'm always in touch with everyone but I I don't truly see until I've come back Mm. um recently you know last year did I see um the growth of um the gym not only the gym but the sport and um, the involvement from, um, yeah, and the attraction from other females. And then also having a lot of our local um, girls um, come, all come and be at CKB who, you know, prior were scattered at mm-hmm. the gyms all around. Yeah. Um, so that's been so, so, so cool. I love having um, the likes of Baby and now Nye and, you know, the, yeah, a few of the girls from all over, you know, um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, the smaller girls as well. Just having that female energy, mm. um, it's unique and it's needed in yeah. a place like that. And yeah. it's um, how different is it? How different is it to train? And is it, I suppose, you know, necessary? Like you know, you're preparing to fight now. Yeah. Is it necessary to be sparring with females? And what what is the difference? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. We bring a different energy and uh, um, and a different pace and tenacity to uh, to to our live work. Um, guys, are obviously, have something that we just don't, have, and that's testosterone. So even you know, we can be we can be strong and tough ourselves, but guys are just it's just a fact. Like you know, they're more physical than us and. Um, and the, the pool of you know quality people we've got there, and fighters we've got there, you know, a lot more experienced, a lot more technical for the most part. We've got a great mix actually, you know, um, to work with. But um, females, man, uh, they, they go at it like you know, and they, they give you that look and that feel and that energy um, that you you'll experience um, in a real fight. So I really appreciate getting in to work with them um, as much as I can. Um, it's a feel and look 
that I, th I feel is, is very important. And, um, you know, yeah, we've got, having the option now to go between the two has been really cool. And like, like, I, like I mentioned, the likes of Baby and um, Nye and Gina and, um, and uh, yeah, a couple of other girls that are also coming up and that have been training for a while and that are looking to um, pursue fighting. Um, Aroha and yeah, a few girls at the other gym, uh, at the gym are, have been really great additions. Mm. So yeah, no, it's been really cool. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Kapa, yeah. you, I, when I think about you and your journey, especially what you're doing for um, New Zealand women's mixed martial arts, I mean, you're doing an amazing job for the sport in general, but I, I really do think, you know, you were there at a time where there wasn't anybody else around. So, you know, yeah. it's cool to see that growth. Yeah. And, and you, you are one of those leaders. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I've, I've probably only just recently kind of, uh, really understood my stance and where it's at currently because because prior to that I was just doing you mm. know I was just doing and following my passion and my um and and just trying to be the best at what I you know at this at what I'm doing um and I had no real uh blueprint or yeah or path that I, I was trying to follow or trying to aspire to except for just be the best fighter I can be and you know work hard and blah 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 and all that and so uh yeah understanding and just being cool with um the fact that um uh, yeah that I that I play that role is um is really cool and like like we mentioned before and going back to um you know females in the sport and and not having, um, you know, not uh, not being on kind of equal playing fields all the way. Um, like I said, only just stamps my uh, solidarity in the sport and, and what I must do. <laughs> Can't play. But, yeah. Well, that's exactly it. It's the normalising of it, isn't yes. it? Yes. You know? like yeah. Making it normal, yeah. and it's it's only going to happen through women like yourself yes. to pass through those, yeah. come through those experiences. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I really th thought about this, I'm just getting a bit deep, but really, <laughs> you know, I was like, I like the success and I like the um, the praise of, of my labour and, mm. and things like that, so I cannot shy away from the responsibilities mm. that that brings. Mm. Because um, I was, you know, before I, I was uneasy um, with like being a role model, being, um, you know, having having some sort of following, uh, and but now it's just like, okay, you know what? I've got to accept all that comes, accept all of it, and so um, and what to to whatever degree that goes to, um, but you know, just by being me and and pursuing this with everything and and and. Going 100 with it and not shying away from mm. from all the uneasy parts. That's that's mm. just gonna come with growth. Yep. So comfortable yeah. in the uncomfortable. Yeah, it's yeah. The only way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, you're doing a wicked job. <laughs> Thank now you. let's get into a little bit of the PFL side mm. of things. So in May you will be featuring reappearing on the PFL. Yeah. And as we kind of discussed before, the structure of the PFL, well, the event that you're taking part in anyway, runs a little differently to, you know, when you watch the UFC or yep. any other fight promotion, you know, it's two fighters come in there, fight, win, lose, whatever. Yep. But yours has run a little bit different. So can you describe that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so the PFL have uh, taken the structure from uh, the American Football League's NFL and um, structured it uh, like a like a playoff format mm. um, so the first initial fights of the season so yeah they've, they've made it like a season um, uh, are um, regular season fights so yep they pair you up with um, one of the ten uh, competitors in the in the um, in the le in, in your pool and then uh, you get an opportunity to earn points depending on how you win um, or how you lose. Mm -hmm. And um, and you advance forward like on a point system um, on those those first two regular season fights. If you go through, you'll then go to um, the playoffs, uh, semi-finals, mm -hmm. and that's when the stakes in terms of money and things like that um, get higher. Um, 
and yeah, you you go through the two, the the uh, quarters and semi-finals, and then obviously from there the big grand final, which they hold on uh, New Year's, New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so it's a whole thing throughout the year yes. to get to that event. Yeah, event. yeah. So wow. you've got to fight your way to the final, mm. um, and yeah, just like an elimination round, just like um, you know, yeah, following like an NFL for, format or yeah, even similar to our NRL. Mm. Um, and Super 15 and things like that. Yeah. So um, it's really cool. I feel like from the perspective of you can you can follow um, a fighter's journey yeah. kind of throughout that season, um, and it's cool how they've kind of to date marketed it um, and and showcased these fighters and yeah built them up through mm. these fights. And I and and the way that it's structured and formatted, uh, it, it is designed to. Um, have hard, fast, exciting fights. So if you yeah. if you win in a first round or the second round, you've got the opportunity to win the maximum amount of points. If it right. goes to decision, then you'll get less points. Um, obviously, if you yeah if if you win, you get bonus points. If mm. you lose, um, you is won't, that how so. you approach it? Because obviously you've been in the PFL before. Yeah. So do you you know when you're preparing, do you go okay? We we're going for maximum points here. Um, are we going into t- take a block off or yeah. you know like <laughs> yeah no because the game plan would change yeah. wouldn't it yeah like, yeah 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 and of, of course uh depending on the opponent mm. and the style that you're coming up against yeah. and um but never to uh finish it early or that's not ever what i'm looking for if i ever have that mentality or that that focus i feel like it becomes dangerous for mm. me um and you're reaching and you're looking it's um you don't you're not you're not letting it um come at you in the moment yeah. so so yeah and and you know um at, at ckb we prepare to go the distance mm-hmm. and prepare as best as possible for every situation um and so yeah no that that the if that comes of course uh, great it's a bonus <laughs> and um yeah like love it but like uh the the mindset is that I'm going to decision mm. that it's going to be a hard three round um, war. So I I really do mentally personally prepare for for the worst. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so, you know, in lead up and in those preparations, putting yourself um, with the the toughest partners and in the most shittiest positions. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Most uncomfortable positions. Um is is yeah it's just something that because i know what I, like from from being a part of that competition um prior i mm. do know um how it goes and, and and got a better idea now of of the format and, mm. and what's required um because we're fighting every two months yeah as well so um once the season's on it's on and it's um it's it's your whole focus and your whole life at you know, yeah. through, throughout that season. So. so, considering it's all these months, yeah. Do you ever come out of camp? Uh, no. Like per se? No. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um. And and that was what I experienced for the first time mm. in the, the the season one. Um. And I know now what's expected and what's required. Mm. Um. To be able to compete like that. So. Um. Yeah. It's 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 been great because I prepared really early for this. Yeah. Um, just just in terms of um, I, you know, where I'm at, physicality, skill building, and what, what we were able to do in lead up, especially with last year being wiped out basically yeah, due, right. to, due to uh, quarantine and COVID. So mm. um, it, was, it was like, all right, well, I'm gonna get onto this now. Yeah. yeah. In terms of just the things that I can control um, being physically and you know mentally um, as prepared as possible mm. before camp started. Yeah, yeah. but camp really started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long you time know, ago. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you already know who your opponent is um, yes. coming forward. Is it yeah. Laura Sanchez? Yeah, Laura, Laura Sanchez. Sanchez. Yeah. So she's the the tall basketball yeah girl yeah. of the group. Yeah. Um, that's coming to to face you first off. So yeah. what do you know about her? And what are you expecting from her? Um, yeah, she's got she's pr- very similar in physicality, a tall, strong, athletic girl, mm. um, and uh, kickboxing. Um, 
Yeah, stri- a striking pedigree. She's from uh, Drew Krufus's gym mm-hmm. um, over over in the States, obviously. And um, yeah, has a good stable, good coach. Um, she's quite experienced in the amateurs. Uh, so she's had a few amateur MMA fights under her belt. Um, and more than what it shows on her professional record. So she is she is quite experienced. She's had, I think, six or eight amateur fights and then two pro fights and then this one coming out with myself. So, um, yeah, she brings she brings more experience than people um, probably will give her credit for. Mm. Um, and, yeah, she likes to, to stand. Um, she's an experienced uh, jiu-jitsu. I think she's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Okay. Um, her wrestling's average from from what I have footage I've seen, um, but yeah, she she's she uses her range well and mm. she's a strong girl. So um, it'll be a great first matchup for me, uh, style wise. Yeah, yeah, because um, it'll just be who can negate mm. each other That's right. the best. Well, yeah, you talk about her distance, but that would probably be your yes. approach as well. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, and. Um, so yeah, and I just believe I'm 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 a bit faster and a bit yeah, just yeah, timing wise, a bit more accurate just mm. from what I've seen anyway, and in terms of knowing my style a lot more and refining that over mm. this last last while. So uh, yeah, it'll be really good. It'll be good test, good test, and I look forward to facing her first. I think I think out of all the girls, that would be um, that's one I probably would have chosen if I if I could have. Right. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really can't wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Likewise. I know you have an opponent, but there's another person on the PFL roster who stands out. I mean, Clarissa Shields signing to PFL. Yeah. Um, in the division, I mean, I think there's, there is only one division PFL, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's your division. Yeah. Would there ever be a chance of you two colliding at some point in the future? I. I Honestly, I, I feel like yes. I, f- I do. It's just something in me when I found out she was getting signed and when all that hype and hoopla was coming um, into into the promotion, I was um, I, I messaged you straight away. <laughs> like, this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sent him a sent him a link and um, yeah, and I and I and I just I just we I just started talking about it to him straight away and. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, she obviously has um, incredible accolades and brings um, so much from, from her boxing um, um, successes and, and experience. Um, and uh, she, she's quite vocal and uh, brings, brings that to it as well. Um, and so that's great. But I would love to come up against her. I would love to be the one to take her out. I would love that. And um, <laughs> yeah, she... Yeah, it'd be it'd be awesome, and you know she she's like fair game to her. That's this, this transition isn't easy, mm. um, and especially with her um, background in boxing and yeah. and the level that she's um, she's at, and then adopting a new sport and signing to a new promotion mm. like takes a lot. So yeah, go, you know that that'll be cool. But um, oh man, I'd just love to be the one to. I just, I just no what i would do and you know, this is stuff I I feel. Th- yeah 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 so um yeah and, 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 and you know personally i'm a fan of her so mm, I, I, you know time. like yeah. um you know and all that she's achieved and how she's gone about it that's cool because that's her mm. um but i'd love to face face her yeah i think that would be really awesome Okay, well, yeah. maybe we're going to have to have a conversation with Ray Seffo. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. No. Give her her warm-up <laughs> fights, Ray, okay, and then Get hand her over. <laughs> yeah. Now on the Just topic... put me in there. <laughs> <laughs> on the topic of Ray Seffo, obviously he's the, the founder of the PFL, yeah. um, is behind, you know, all the major matchups for yep. the promotion as well. Obviously he's from New Zealand, yep. K1 legend, yep. Hall of Famer, um, well, the, the list goes on with the Mian six-time world champion and yeah. um, the accolades go on. But yeah. explain your relationship with him because the one thing that I thought was so cool was that you get to be a part of a promotion, um, you know, under a person who has gone through a similar journey to you from home. It's yes. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, totally cool. Um, and uh, it was just... 
when he initially approached me about this division um, uh, coming to life and, and, and before it all got announced and when he um, approached me about it and, and had a, an, that initial chat, like I said, I was so excited and like just, just talking to him really put me at ease because mm. he really did have that um, um, not only just fight experience and <laughs> accolades of knowing firsthand like, um, you know, what fighters go through and, and what we um, need as as um, as athletes and people, he understood that whole side. He just he we he also had the element of like being from the same culture in the same country. So um, it put a lot of things at ease, and um, it was a no brainer like for me to to commit to this um, opportunity um, at that time. So he was a huge part in me. Um, committing to this and, 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 and being a part of the PFL because um, at that time I only had, had two MMA fights and obviously my, my experience was and, and most of my fights were in Muay Thai mm. May, but in saying that I was training yep. um, for a long time mm. um, uh, in, a, you know, uh, in MMA and all the other all the other uh, disciplines. So he, he was well aware of that and knew that and knew that I was based in the States at that point in time when he approached me um, and said, look, like, um, this is probably going to definitely happen and I want you to be um, one of the girls in the in the uh, 12 lightweight division. And, uh, yeah, then we, we kept in touch and went back and forth and then once he said everything was all confirmed and good to go for, for tw uh, sorry, 2019, yeah, I was like, let's do it, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, funny, it was like there were people around me um, at that point in time, uh, trying to discourage me from committing to it and doing it, and out of fear of not knowing what the promotion will. Yeah, do. yeah. I think I think out of fear of um, the legitimacy of the the promotion and like and the structure and um, how they were paying each each winner a um, uh, million dollars and then plus trying to pay the whole roster, but. Yeah. But the, the season prior to me coming on spoke mm. for itself. Everyone got paid, yeah. well-run production, um, and um, there wasn't anything that um, negative, really. Mm. But, and, and, they put, and there was amazing, exciting fights and, and just another avenue for, for fighters to be a part of another big, major organisation outside of the UFC. Yeah. Um, so it was all positive. Um, and, and, and just and then it was a thing of my experience going in in terms of MMA, um, but yeah, nothing stopped me. Like I, I was just like, no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And <laughs> yeah, that, that was my whole thing. I was just like, yeah, it's never wracking. Yeah, okay, but all right. Well, I'll never know, and I'm not going to not know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so uh, he was, and when you know, I voiced all this to him at mm. the time, and we're, we're going back and forth and. He was just super encouraging and um, supportive and, and understood where I was at as yeah. a fighter and and, and, um, and and also where I was located and situated, being away from home, mm. not having, um, you know, that, that, that support base like we're used to around. So, um, yeah, no, he was, he was amazing. So um, um, it's so cool that, like... He's our CEO and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I was actually very fortunate to be able to speak to Ray Sefo earlier this week and here's what he had to say about our talented fighter, Jenna Fabian. Well, I think Jenna you know, has a lot of talent um, and I think her first time around, you know, she now understands, you know, the landscape of what needs to be done and how she needs to prepare and whatnot. And I think her making the transition, moving back home um, with her, you know, her team and whatnot in city kickboxing, I think that helped a lot. Uh, so I expect the best of Jenner this second time around. Um, she'll be facing a girl by the name of Laura Sanchez, who also comes from a, a stand-up background, a bit of kickboxing. She's done a little bit of uh, amateur MMA, uh, but also this is the first, uh, her first time on a big stage. So, you know, um, like I said, I think the first time around, it. And uh, gave Jenner a lot of um, knowledge of what 
to expect in terms of a big show and whatnot. So she's going to walk in there as a veteran rather than a, you know, a newcomer. So no, but I expect a lot of good things from Jenna this year. It's awesome because, you know, she knows how to, you know, kickbox. She knows how to defend takedowns. She knows how to keep it standing. And so, and I'm sure that she's been working on the ground as well. So it's really cool to see martial arts evolve so much where fighters don't care whether they're fighting a wrestler or, or a stand-up person or, you know, or a jiu-jitsu practitioner. So it's, it's awesome because it just uh, it makes my job easier. So the kickboxing is actually really putting um, New Zealand on the map. You know, we did it in our day in terms of kickboxing. David Tua uh, did it in, in terms of boxing. Joseph Parker and, and, and others are doing it in, you know, now as in, in terms of boxing as well. But, you know, uh, Israel Adesanya and Carlos and Brad and, you know, Shane Young and all these guys are literally just fighting at the top level of the game. And so it's really humbling for me to see our own people do so well, but also on the highest levels of the game. And so, you know, it's really good to, to see that. And um, I, you know, listen, New Zealand is a small country, but man, we got a lot of firepower. I'm, I'm, you know, keeping my eye out because we have amazing talent down there. <laughs> and so, you know, um, the door is open once they get gain experience and, and want to, you know, come over and, uh, and fight in some of the big leagues, then uh, I'm willing to talk to anyone that uh, becomes a free agent. You know how people say that they're born to do this and this is where you're meant to be and that it isn't work when it's something that you love and you're passionate about. That's exactly how it is for me. And because I've been, you know, because I started my own league, um, I'm in the game, you know, I'm still here and I haven't left. And so, you know, when people ask me, do you miss it? I'm like, no, I'm in it. I love it. You know, now I get the, now I'm sitting on the other side where now to be able to sign somebody and see the, the scars in their eyes, because that's how I was when I was first signed to K1. I was, I couldn't believe that I was, you know, sitting in this arena and let alone fighting in 80,000, in front of 80,000 people in Tokyo Dome. So, you know, to now be the guy that actually makes these, be able to give these guys the opportunity to live out their goals and dreams. Um, it's just such a fulfilling journey, if you will. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm a Kiwi boy at heart, you know what I mean? So, Gina, one thing about you mentioning, you know, PFL and its legitimacy and, you know, speaking to Ray, obviously he's a big believer in his product mm. and it is continuing to grow. You see former UFC champions jumping on this roster now. Anthony Pettis has a fight uh, on the PFL next month and Fabrizio Verdum on the same night that you do. Mm. So what are your thoughts about, you know, the decision you made, A, mm. and B, knowing that you're in really great company? Yeah. Um, I think um, at the time, even even uh, before it all got confirmed that I was going to sign on and they were going to uh, create this 155 or 70kg division, um, I, I knew from the jump like what an opportunity it would be um, just with knowing who was involved in the production and where they were at that point where they were going with it mm. and, and, and prior to them signing to ESPN, that was always yeah. a, bit, um, a push at that point. Yeah. Um, and then they got the contract and deal. I just, I always knew um, that this would be such um, a, a massive opportunity to be a part of, to expand the women's MMA um, and, and create that, uh, that other division because we're behind in terms of, um, you know, uh, in comparison to the men, mm. just because on the main stage, women have come later and yeah. we've started later mm. in terms of, you know, yeah, being on the, those main platforms. And so this is just another step um, uh, toward that growth because we'll eventually catch up mm. um, and we will have so many divisions for, for our women and, 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 and have the, um, you know, and, and level out that playing field yeah. bit by bit, it's just gonna take time. Mm. Um, but this is, um, this is just 
another small step in, in, in that direction and I get to be a part of it and, and figurehead that as well. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I just want to do what I can to, to, to really uh, solidify this d division and, and, and grow it and, and for, for, for more to come mm -hmm. in, the, in the years. So it's, it's um, a huge opportunity to be a part of and, and um, really, really fantastic that the, the PFL have, um, yeah, have, have been able to put this on and, and it's so unique to what's currently out there in the exactly. other. Exactly and the yeah. other promotions yeah. um, at the moment. Mm. So to be a part of that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it makes for exciting fights and it you know, makes for exciting viewing as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the girls in our pool are um, legitimate killers, mm. man. Like there's, there's, some, there's some really well-versed um, uh, girls in their own right. Like none of the girls in this division are, are cans or, or schlubs, you know? Um, especially this year, like they've um, brought on a few more um, names who have been, uh, who are very experienced in the game and fought, you know, XUSC, yeah. Strike Force, um, and Victor and things mm -hmm. like that. So the, it's only getting deeper. And then I think with the, the structure and format um, like we talked about and uh, the grand prize that's becoming very attractive mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to, to a lot of the girls what out there. What is the grand prize, by the way, Jenna? Um, a million dollars. <laughs> a million dollars. Just and a lazy million. Dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we're, we're uh, building up to that all throughout the season. So the, the, prize, the prize money just gets higher and higher each each. Um, um, each regular season fight and playoff fight as you advance. Mm. So huge motivating factors there. <laughs> yeah. I bet. Yeah. Well, yeah. so much to fight for, but in saying that, Jenna, really do appreciate you coming in and giving your story about where you're at up until this point and can't wait to see you soar even further in the future. So thank, thank you so, so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And you at home can watch Jenna in action in May, first weekend of May here on Sky. PFL Prof Professional Fighters League will be live on ESPN here on Sky Sport. Hey, Kona mai.